Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jamie Sullivan and I'm the marketing specialist here at LeoStream. I am joined today by LeoStream CEO Karen Gondoli who will be taking us through the presentation. I'm also joined by LeoStream CTO Bill Brinkley who will be available to answer any technical questions during the Q&A portion of our presentation. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Please be sure to enter any questions into the GoToWebinar questions panel. F feel free to enter questions during the presentation and we will circle back to them during the Q&A. So let's take a quick look at where we're heading today. First, I'll take you through a brief overview of who LeoStream is and what qualifies us to talk about BDI. From there, we're going to discuss what security means in a BDI environment. Then we are going to quickly touch on our flagship product, the LeoStream Connection Broker, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, and how it fits into the VDI picture. Then we are going to dive deep into our newest product, the LeoStream Gateway. Finally, we will leave time at the end for Q&A. So who is LeoStream? We are an independent VDI vendor specializing in connection management for over 15 years. We strive to be at the forefront of technology, integrating with all major cloud vendors, virtualization technologies, and protocols to meet our customers' needs. Because of our focus on solving, of solving tough problems, some of the biggest names in finance, oil and gas, semiconductor design, and healthcare trust the LeoStream Connection Broker for their VDI deployments. Because of our technical partnerships with some of the largest players in the VDI space, we are able to seamlessly integrate into just about any VDI environment, making it easy for our customers to architect and deploy a complete VDI solution with the technology stack of their choice. So that's a little bit about us. Now I'll hand the presentation over to Karen to take us through what security means in a VDI environment. Okay, thanks, Jamie. So before we dive in, let's make sure we're all on the same page as to what we mean by BDI in the context of this webinar. Now, I know for many of you, this is a refresher course, and I will not at all be offended if you decide to tune me out for a few minutes. So for those of you, I'll talk to you in five. For the rest of you, let's start with a little basics. VDI is short for Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. The idea is to utilize and expand the virtualization technology investment you made for virtu server virtualization to host desktop operating systems as well. Essentially, you remove desktops from users' desks and put them in the data center. You then use connection broker technology to manage the user's connection to their hosted desktops and a display protocol to transport and render the remote display onto the user's client device. Historically, our customers have deployed BDI in their private data centers, but more recently, we've noticed a shift. Companies now want to leverage cloud environments for their hosted desktops and applications as well as their private data center, creating a hybrid environment. And they have many options for building this out. Amazon Web Services, Azure from Microsoft, Google, and a host of other managed clouds have matured to a point where they are very viable options for hosting desktops and can even provide either the full infrastructure that you need or just give you the extra capacity to satisfy bursting requirements. Now, there are a number of reasons organizations decide to move to BDI and security is among them. So let's look at what you need to think about when securing your virtual desktops. So clearly security is a huge topic, but I only have a half hour of your valuable time. So for this webinar, I wanna focus our discussion on what to consider when securing data and desktops in the cloud, and then on how you provide secure access to your hosted desktops only to the intended set of users. The first thing to consider when securing your desktop environment is the desktop itself. Unfortunately, moving the user's desktop operating system into a cloud or data center doesn't protect that operating system from downloaded viruses, ransomware, or spyware. Your users can still be a weak link in your system, and you still need to secure your desktops with firewalls and malware protection, just as you would any physical machine. Virtualization does bring some new tools to the table, though, by providing ways to snapshot and backup VMs, so you can roll back or recreate the desktop in the event of an infection. Now we could talk for hours about how to best secure the desktops, but I want to cover, to cover some of the other components that VDI introduces into your desktop environment. For example, there's the user's client device. If you're supporting a bring your own device initiative, you may care a little less about when the user downloads a virus onto their personal laptop, but you do need to ensure that you keep any malware isolated on their client and away from their remote machine. 
and you also need to ensure that you can connect users to their remote desktop from their client device of choice and from anywhere they happen to roam. That connection is the job of your display protocol, which transports the screen from the data center or cloud to the user's client device. The data associated with your selected display protocol needs to be secure and encrypted to keep people from sniffing the traffic, intercepting the user's screen, and seeing everything that they're doing. Which brings us to the final piece of this puzzle, the network. The best way to secure the remote desktops is to lock them away in a location that isn't accessible from the public network. In a cloud environment, that means tucking your desktops into a virtual private cloud or VPC. In your data center, that may mean creating a lockdown segment on your network. Getting your users into those isolated networks is where the LeoStream Gateway can help. So just to summarize the pieces we're going to focus on going forward, the key to building a secure VDI environment is to find a way to provide secure access to remote desktops locked in a VPC only to your users, but from whatever client device they want to use. Now, if we take my summary sentence and convert it to an architectural diagram, it ends up looking something like what you see here. This is our traditional high-level LeoStream architecture diagram. Users log into LeoStream from whatever client device they choose. The connection broker then integrates with your authentication servers and whatever multi-factor authentication systems you may have to identify the user and authorize them to access their all allotted resources. Those resources can be any of the things you see at the top right including virtual machines hosted in the public cloud, physical desktops, what have you. So now we're saying that you wanna hide those desktops in a VPC or lock them in an isolated network. If you do, there's a new component to the LeoStream architecture diagram, the LeoStream gateway. It provides an access point for the user to connect to their remote resource. Okay, let's move on from the basics and move into some LeoStream specific information. As you know, we build VDI connection management software. So let's look at how you can leverage our software to secure aspects of your VDI environment, namely how you identify and authorize users and how you connect them to network isolated instances. The first part of the answer lies with our connection broker. As Jamie mentioned, the connection broker is LeoStream's flagship product. It's the culmination of 15 years of experience working with customers who built large scale production VDI environments. Those 15 years afforded us the know-how to build the most flexible connection broker on the market, allowing you to manage your entire hosted environment, be that virtual or physical, on-prem or off, all from a single pane of glass. LeoStream supports a wide range of display protocols, client devices, workflows, you name it. So you can build the environment you need and find exactly who has access to what and for how long. The connection broker is the gatekeeper for your hosted environment, working with your authentication servers to ensure that only known users have access. So let's quickly look at other ways putting a connection broker into your hosted desktop environment helps to secure access. I've already mentioned that the connection broker serves as a gatekeeper to validate user identity. LeoStream uses your Active Directory authentication servers or any system based on Open LDAP or even NIST to authenticate users and provide access to your VDI environment. If you want more than just password protection for your environment, you may consider rolling out some form of multi-factor authentication. So you can identify the user based on something they know and something they have. For example, a password and an RSA token or smart card. LeoStream supports a number of different MFA systems, so you can design your authentication method in the manner that works best for your organization. After LeoStream validates your user's credentials, you tailor what the user can access based on who they are and where they log in from. In LeoStream, you assign a policy to a user based on their identity and location. That policy provides access to pools of desktops and indicates what display protocol to use. That means even after LeoStream authenticates a user, you can still block their access to hosted desktops based on where they are by denying them a policy from certain locations. Or you can even use LeoStream to block access for authenticated users by refusing a policy if the user isn't a member of a certain Active Directory group. The key is that the connection broker gives you flexible control over who gets access to what, from where, and for how long. And by using the connection broker as a single login portal, you have audit level tracking of that who, what, and how long. 
Just place the LeoStream agent on your remote desktops and your connection broker logs all notifications related to when users log in, when they disconnect and reconnect, when they log out, and even when they go idle. The LeoStream agent also notifies the broker of any rogue logins, meaning a user has logged into a desktop without first logging into LeoStream. With rogue user notifications, you can control the user's remote session even if they try to sneak in and circumvent LeoStream. So far, we've covered securing access by authenticating users, using policies to restrict what the users can access, and tracking rogue logins. But what about actually connecting users to their desktops? If you've secured your remote desktops inside a VPC, how do they connect? Well, here it is, the moment you've been waiting for. If you've tuned me out, now's the time to dial it back in. Now we're gonna talk about the LeoStream gateway. Now you can all tell this is a building slide, right? Because there's a lot of blank space. So let's get right to it. The LeoStream gateway is a standalone appliance that provides two key features. The first is an HTML5 client that can connect users to their desktops using RDP, VNC, TGX, or SSH. The second feature, which is more important for our discussion, is the gateway functionality, which channels traffic between the hosted desktop in its lockdown network and the user's client device. By using the LeoStream gateway, you can secure your desktops by keeping them off of the internet until the appropriate user needs to connect. At that point, the user's client device accesses that desktop through a random port on the LeoStream gateway. So let's walk through what that looks like. Let's start with your users who are sitting somewhere out in the real world and your virtual machines, which are isolated in a VPC. Also in that VPC is your LeoStream connection broker. And in between your VPC and the outside world is the LeoStream gateway. The gateway and the broker are separate appliances. And in this configura configuration, the gateway provides an access point for the connection broker to initiate user logins. For example, when a user needs to log into their LeoStream environment, they go to an HTTPS site that is on the publicly exposed IP address of your LeoStream gateway. After that IP address, they enter the text slash broker slash into the URL to tell the LeoStream gateway to pass the user through to the connection broker login page. The user provides their login credentials, like username and password, and the connection broker uses those to identify the user. If you create a VPN from your VPC into your data center, the connection broker can use your corporate Active Directory server for authentication. Alternatively, you can build an authentication server in the VPC along with the connection broker in the desktops, or even use the connection broker as a local authentication server. After the user is identified, the connection broker offers the user a policy which defines their offered desktops. The gateway then sends that offer list to the user. Now here's where it gets interesting. Now the user requests a connection to one of their offered desktops. At that point, the connection broker tells the LeoStream gateway about the desktop, for example, the desktop's private IP address, and what display protocol to use for the connection. Now keep in mind, each display protocol has its preferred port, for example, 3389 for RDP or 42966 for RGS. But the Leo screen gateway doesn't use the display protocols port. If it did, you could only connect a single user through the gateway. Instead, the LeoStream gateway considers a port range, which happens to be between 20,000 and 30,000. And all those ports are available for a connection. Given that, what the LeoStream gateway actually does at this point is opens up a random port, not the display protocols port. The client connects to the LeoStream gateway on this random port and receives the display protocol data from the remote machine. From the remote VM's perspective, it's transmitting normal, for example, RDP data, along the normal, for example, 3389 port. It knows nothing about the LeoStream gateway, meaning you don't need to do any configuration to your remote desktop to make them compatible with the LeoStream gateway. At this point, the remote VM's operating system then also authenticates the user, and boom, the user is logged in and connected to their remote machine. When the user logs out or disconnects from their remote desktop, the LeoStream gateway closes the port, once again blocking access to that VM. So why is this all good? 
when you talk about the LeoStream gateway in the context of your security story, you should consider two things. How secure is the gateway itself? And how does it help you secure your remote resources? It's not actually about securing the connection. That is secured by your display protocol, which encrypts the traffic. The LeoStream gateway doesn't provide additional encryption or certificate negotiations. But don't let that make you think the gateway doesn't bring extra security to your environment. In a public cloud, using the LeoStream gateway allows you to put the single gateway IP address on the public internet instead of exposing all of your VMs. That limits your attack vector to a single IP. And that IP address is to a VM running security enhanced Linux with a set of secured services such as Apache and OpenSSL. And all those services can be updated with the operating system on which the gateway is running. So the gateway as a machine on the internet is very secure. Then, because the gateway is using random ports to establish the connection, bots that may hit the LeoStream gateway can't just hit the RDP port and connect to a desktop. You need to know not only the IP address of the gateway, but also what random port it choose to open for a particular connection. And again, that random port is open only for the duration of the user's connection. So to wrap it up, by using LeoStream, you can secure your environment by isolating all of your hosted resources in a private network limiting access via a single point, the gateway, and using the LeoStream connection broker to authorize the connection. Now, everything I've talked about is coming up in our soon to be released 9.0 release. And the other thing that we're actually adding to that release is a whole new look and feel to the connection broker. So since I know a number of you on this webinar are existing customers, I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek of our new LeoStream sign-in page. Hey. <laughs> And you'll see more when Nino comes out later this year. It's very exciting. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Jamie. Thank you so much for the presentation, Karen. Stream Connection Broker or the Leo Stream Gateway or the upcoming 9.0 release. Um, be sure to get in touch with our sales team for a free trial of Leo Stream VDI solutions. Um, and as promised, we are going to open it up to questions. Um, so let's wrap things up with Q&A. Um, and I see I have a couple questions in here already. Um, if you're holding on to them, be sure to enter them in now. Um, first question I want to take is with regards to the HTML5 viewer. Um, the question is, if I want to use my HTML5 viewer to view my desktops in browser, do I have to use the port forwarding feature as well? Bill, do you want to take that question? Sure, that's a simple one. Uh, yeah, the, the two features are completely distinct. So it's a, it's a gateway is one piece of software, but it has an HTML5 viewer component and it has this port forwarding uh, gateway component. And you don't have to use either one to get the features of the other. Great, okay. Well, I hope that explains it. So um, the two features are independent of each other. You don't have to use both. Um, the other question I wanna take, I'm just kind of scrolling through. Um, and if I don't get to your question during this session, we will email you afterwards. Um, is the LeoStream gateway compatible with the LeoStream client? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is indeed. The, the, um, the, if, you're, if you're more technical in using the LeoStream client, the, the, um, the client talks to the broker as always. It can pass through the gateway. If that's the way you have your network set up that Karen went over earlier. But uh, the, the client receives the configuration file back from the LeoStream connection broker with the forwarded port already configured in the configuration. And it just connects um, directly through the gateway to the desktop you wanted. So both the, the client also doesn't need to know about the gateway, just as the desktop doesn't need to know about the gateway. Great, thanks so much, Bill. Okay, we've got another one here um, about rogue logins, which we, we touched on very briefly, but let's like kind of circle back to that because we didn't really go in depth with it. Um, does the gateway do anything to prevent rogue logins? Yeah, that's one of the reasons we started the gateway project was the, the LeoStream has a lot of controls around logging off rogue users if they happen to be on the desktop that's being assigned but uh, we've always had requests for features to block rogue users. And if you're on a flat network configuration and any user can get to any desktop, there's nothing really to stop your users from automatically just RDPing to a desktop they want to use without going to the broker. 
And uh, the nice thing about the gateway is if you put everything behind the gateway, when a user logs in, it'll open up only some random port on the gateway, and that'll be the only way to that machine. So you can effectively block out rogue users by using a gateway, and 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 that way that the the connections will only go to the ports that LeoStream has opened up and and assigned. And users can't just RDP to any machine they want to at any time. Great. I hope that answers that question. Yeah. Here's here's one that I like. A question that came up is about how do you handle, um, as your environment grows, scaling up the, conne the connections that are allowed through the gateway? Oh. <laughs> you liked it, you were going to answer it. <laughs> no, this is for, <laughs> that's why you're here. That's why we're both here. <laughs> yeah, scaling is always a, a, a good question. Um, the, the gateway is built, uh, is built to scale, like everything else we have. So the, the answer is you can certainly deploy more than one gateway. And there is a, a ability in the connection broker to set up a load balancer in front of all the gateways. And that way, what you can do is say, the uh, as, as more and more connections come in, you can have them balanced across multiple gateways. And the because the is because the gateway is simply a port forwarder at its very lowest level, uh, it's actually pretty much dependent on the speed of the machine itself and the network bandwidth that you have available combined with the network requirement, the bandwidth requirements of the protocol that you're using. So if you're using a real lightweight um, uh, protocol, you know, RDP, for example, or I, I don't know, I'm all offhand, <laughs> but um, lightweight protocols will obviously, you can fit a lot more connections through one gateway, whereas you know, heavy screen scraping protocols like VNC or um, RGS or some of the others uh, that have you know high, higher bandwidth requirements, you're going to need more gateways and, and more more support resources to handle those. And so by just adding gateways and adding load balancer in front of them, uh, it's, it's easy to spread out the uh, the load across multiple um, multiple gateways. Perfect. Great. So I hope that answers that. Um, we do have time for a few more questions. Um, if anybody would like to enter more into the questions box. I think I, I think one just popped up about licensing and, and what we always like to say here on the technical side is you got to talk to our sales team about licensing. So <laughs> Yeah, no, do, any questions about licensing, we direct to sales. And if we say anything else, they get mad at us. So mm -hmm. please direct to, to sales at leostream.com. Um, Okay. I mean, I think that about covers it for today then, and we can let you all get back to your days a little bit early. Yeah, um, I think the, yeah. the only thing I'll add is thank you very much for attending. And if anyone is interested in looking at a beta as the new UI becomes available or trying out some of the features, we do have a beta of the 9.0 release available. So again, contact sales and I'll hook you right up. Yep. No, and I'd like to add one more thing. It's a plug for our um, LeoStream support blog. Um, I know there's a lot of current LeoStream customers on the call. I wanted to throw that out there. It is a blog about making the most of your LeoStream connection broker. So if you'd like to subscribe to it, we send weekly updates, tips, tricks, troubleshooting. It's a great blog. So we, I will send out a link to subscribe if you are interested. So thanks so much for joining us today.